Hello everyone, welcome to this video demonstration where I will be demonstrating this project that is running on an STM32 microcontroller, which is utilizing free RTOS in order to create a user interactive menu that allows a user to um, drive different LED patterns and also to set the date and time using the RTC peripheral inside the STM32 microcontroller. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start the demo. So here we see a, uh, an, a menu that is printing via the UART. Uh, and this is the this is a UART communication protocol. And uh, we will go ahead and see the first LED pattern. So I select zero in order to input the that I want to go to LED effects. And we have four total effects. So I'll go ahead and show each of one of them one by one. So this is the first pattern. Um, give me a second. It's probably not connected to ground. Yeah, sorry about that. It got disconnected. So there we go. Sorry about that delay, but now it's connected to ground and it's working. So this is the first pattern in which all of the LEDs are blinking. Now let's go to the second pattern. So this is sort of like a ping pong effect where the first two blink, then they toggle, and then the other uh, blink, and then they toggle indefinitely. Then the next pattern is E3, which is sort of one by one. And then the last pattern, which is E4, effect four, which is same thing, but it's the other way around. And this was accomplished using software timers. So later on, I'll go into more detail on how this was accomplished from the embedded software perspective. So the next thing is we're going to configure the date and the time. So let's go ahead and configure the time. Uh, let's say for hour, let's enter uh, arbitrary values. Let's say it's 2, um, 2.05 seconds, let's say 0. And uh, put AM. And there we see that it's 2.05 AM with one second because the one second elapsed after the printout. So now let's go ahead and set the date. So uh, let's say it's day 24, which happens to be 20, 24 today. And uh, the month is 12, and then the year 22. And there you go, 24, 12, uh, 2022. And um, another thing to note is that if, you, if the user inputs improper values, invalid option, also uh, same thing. We could put a, a, a bogus value invalid option. And then again, uh, we can actually shut down the pattern by pressing none. And then if we go to date and time, we could do, uh, oh, another feature is that it enables reporting, which uses a software timer to periodically display the date and time. So see now how it's displaying approximately every five to six uh, it's it's every five seconds, but obviously with uh, there is some sort of variability with uh, rounding times and it printing, but that's the main idea. And then if we also there's error handling in date and time. So if we enter a bad value for time, let's say uh, enter hour, let's say fifteen, invalid option. And then again for the date, there's error handling. Enter the date. Let's see. 35 bogus value, invalid option, follow directions, you bozo. That's a pretty heartwarming print statement. I like it. But anyway, now we will be getting into more detail on how this was made from the free RTOS perspective. I will show you the high-level design as well as getting into implementation, what resources were used, what free RTOS con um, configurations was were used, also what free RTOS utilities were used, such as uh, tasks, um, uh, Queues, um, and then the uh, task notifications, and then also the software timers. I believe those are the utilities that were used in this project. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next part of the video. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the second part of this video where I will be explaining 
how under the hood this is working at least at a high level and let's go ahead and get started so the main things to note is that we have a total of five tasks we have the command task which processes the user commands from the input using the serial console which is trans uh, received via UART then we have the LED task the menu task print task, and then the RTC task. We also have three queues that we utilize. The significance of these queues is that uh, every single time that there is user input, there is uh, their data that gets placed, each character of what the user input gets put into this command queue. Then over here, the command task dequeues that data and then process it accordingly and then determines whether or not we should change state. So the command task has three main states. We have main menu, LED menu, and RTC menu. And depending on which state we are in for the command task, is uh, it's what determines how we process the user input. So meaning that uh, data that is valid for main menu might not be valid for LED menu, which might not be valid for RTC menu, and uh, the, and and so on and so forth. So again, um, this is the command queue. Whenever there is data here to be dequeued by the command task, the command task will execute. And then the print queue, as we saw earlier in the demonstration, we saw that you were using UART to transmit characters onto the serial console using um, either, you could use any tool. In my case, I was using Termite. And uh, tasks that write onto this queue will then uh, wake, will unblock the print queue task, which will then run and dequeue the data and will transmit character by character. And that's what you see when you see, that's what happens when you see the, um, when you see characters being printed out on the serial console. And then lastly, whenever we're in the RTC menu state, the command queue will pop from this queue. Um, sorry, the command task will pop from the command queue and then it will store that data and then push it onto this RTC command queue. And at that point, um, we could start configuring the RTC task. So let's go ahead and go through some sample. Um, actually, one thing, one last thing I should note is that the LEDs that we saw earlier were, the, those patterns were accomplished by toggling LEDs using uh, software timers, which is a feature that FreeRTOS offers. And here's some example code. Um, so in the once we're in the LED menu, if we want to, if, if if the user wants to blink pattern E1, then we stop all timers. We set all the LEDs to low so that we're starting from a fresh start, and then we start the timer with this uh, corresponding handle, which corresponds within it. The handle has a structure member which contains a function pointer to the to the callback for the timer. And in this case, um, this is a simple one. It's simply toggling them all, all on. Oh, actually, in this case, we're starting with these ones already on, and, they're, and then we're going to toggle all of them, meaning that the two that are already on are going to be toggled off, and then the two that were off are going to be toggled on, and that's just going to alternate periodically. This is an example of a more complicated, slightly more complicated uh, pattern in which we basically go one by one. We uh, toggle the first one, which was already off, so it's going to be on. Then we toggle the one we just, uh, we toggle the previous one, and then we toggle the next one, which will turn it on. And then again, the next state, we toggle off the previous one and toggle on the current one, and then it just repeats like that. So now we're going to be talking about this graph right here, which is an example execution of how the tasks block, unblock, and then run with respect to time. So in the first part, we have the menu task. This menu task executes and it uh, on queues data onto this print task queue, sorry, onto this print queue, which will then cause this print task to unblock because it was waiting on this queue to be, this queue to be non-empty. And when it does so, we go from one to two. At this point, the print task will dequeue, meaning it will take the data in here and it will send each car through UART to transmit. And once the 
print task has finished um, dequeuing all the print queue data and has finished transmitting it via UART, then it will check to see if there's more data in the print queue. And in this case, because um, there are no other tasks that have unqueued data into print queue, it will be empty and task two will block. At this point, we have this asterisk here denoted IRQ in which we have the user input. The user input from the serial console uh, places data onto the UART RX receiving buffer, which will then uh, invoke an interrupt, which will then take us to the interrupt service routine. What the ISR does, it, it then takes the data from the RX buffer and it places it onto this command queue right here. So this contains now user data, which is basically because the user wants to interact with the menu and it wants to go from either, either to the LED menu so that it can control the LEDs or to the RTC clock so that it can control that. And um, at that point, let's see. Uh, so yes, uh, data is placed onto the IR or onto this command queue. And because the command task was waiting for this command queue to be non-empty, it is now non-empty. There's data inside, which will unblock this task and it will now run. At this point, it will um, process the data accordingly. And from that, it will make a decision whether we have an invalid input there, which in which we stay in the main menu, or if we transition to either the LED menu state or the RTC menu state. In this example, the user input a LED menu command correctly, and we go into the LED menu state. And at this point, um, and at this point, the LED task places data onto the print queue because it's gonna print the data of the LED task of the LED menu. It will place the data into the print queue, in which the print task is now gonna be unblocked. It's going to be unblocked because there's data here since it was waiting for new data to be there. And at that point, it will, again, follow the same process from before, which is DQ the data and then transmit each individual character composing the LED menu strings. And at that point, it will check to see if the print queue is empty, in which it will. So it will block indefinitely until someone puts data on there. And at this point, um, let's say that the IRQ is invoked again here, slightly before um, number six. And at that point, it places user command data to the command queue again here. And that, in turn, unblocks the command task again. And at this point, we have uh, where the LED menu and the user happens to uh, correctly input a pattern. And then we see the pattern appear. For example, we might have the first effect where we have all the LEDs toggle simultaneously. And then at that point, um, when that's successful, we go back to the main menu. And again, the main menu uh, on queues data into the print queue. Then the, this unblocks print task. And that is one example cycle of a successful user input slash execution. In future um, examples, the user can either continue to interact with the LED menu state, or they can decide to go to the RTC menu and configure the RTC clock. Um, again, all these features were all these features were already shown in the previous video. So if you're curious about that, go ahead and watch the beginning of the video. Um, again, this is a high level description to give you guys an idea. This along with the source code, which I have provided on my GitHub should be enough to get a sufficient understanding. If you have any questions or suggestions for improvement, feel free to reach me either through uh, Instagram, my engineering uh, embedded software engineering page, or through my email or through the comment section. And um, thank you. Peace out.